Hey guys, there's a poem by William Hastings, it's called The Station. Look it up, you'll love it. And it talks about the journey and not the destination in life, and that's so true. But it's also true for me when I'm traveling with my camper and my Cummins powered Ram. I just love it. It wasn't always that way when I had my gasoline engine back in the 80s and 90s and the darn thing was struggling and bordering on over heating and that sort of thing. We just couldn't wait to get there. Recently we took a camping trip up to Cypress Bend which is on Toledo, Toledo Bend and it's a nice campground up, up in kind of northern Louisiana area. And I got to thinking about this towing in fifth versus sixth and decided that I'd gather some data on that and put some stuff together for you and make a video and I, I find it pretty interesting and I hope you will too and that's what this video is about when you want to use sixth gear when you want to use fifth gear what's the difference in mile per gallon and that sort of thing so let's just start off by looking at one of our first charts here and let me preface that by saying that this is four and a half hours worth of data. So it's not like little spot checks on mileage and stuff like I used to do because I didn't have any other way to do it. Now I've just got reams and reams of, of data that I can look at and average everything out. So I feel like this is, this is pretty accurate. It was all taken on I-49. I didn't try to do any take any readings or average anything out on some of these back roads like we on there. I just wanted to get some good accurate data with a steady speed, cruise control on, basically comparing apples with apples. And so that's what I tried to do. I might also add that my gross vehicle weight, gross combined weight was only about 15,000 pounds, 14, 15,000 pounds. So I'm relatively light. I'm towing a 21 foot trailer. So a word of caution about towing in sixth gear, guys. You want to be very selective when you use sixth gear. Sixth gear is primarily a flat land, low load gear with these 342 rear ends that we have in the 2500s and some 3500s. It should only be used in flat terrain and low load conditions. And toward the end of this video, I put together some what I think is best practices for keeping your transmission in good shape and keeping your clutches and everything happy. We're going to look at several other engine parameters, but let's first just look at the basic data, which is mile per gallon. The constants on this chart, everything was done at 65 miles an hour. As I said, this is four and a half hours worth of averaged out data. Some of it was a little hilly, but most of it was fairly flat, Louisiana-style driving. You're probably familiar with it. In fifth gear, we were at 1,832 RPMs, and in sixth gear, we were at 1,403. My personal recommendation would be don't even think about using sixth gear at anything less than 65 miles an hour because you can see we're at 1,403 RPMs. Now, this is with the 342 rear end, which is what we have on most of our 2500s. Cummins has something they call rock solid rules, which I love to look at. And one of them is for every 2% in reduction in drag, you gain 1% in mile per gallon. And this little camper I'm towing doesn't weigh much. But it's got a high profile, and it's like towing a parachute down the road. I've often thought about putting one of those uh, deflectors up on my roof, and I've heard they work, and then I've heard they don't, so I don't know. Maybe you guys might know. But anything below 1,400 RPMs, I think you're going backwards. I think it's... I hate to use the word lugging because some people say, well, you can't lug an automatic, it's going to downshift. And that's true. But I'll show you the EGTs in a minute here. And you'll see that, you know, they start moving up as you start getting down too low in your RPMs. Also, 
You're using more of your available torque, which is 800 foot-pounds on this engine. And your engine is loaded more. But you're running more efficient because you're running at lower RPMs and therefore you're gaining four tenths of a mile per gallon. Personally, I like to tow at a slower speed than this, but my wife's not into that journey versus destination stuff. She wants to get there, so we have to compromise on that. I don't know why, but she's just not interested in those gauges like I am. So let's take a look at the rest of the data because I want you to be able to make your own decision as to which gear you feel like you want to use. And I'll tell you how I feel here in a little bit after we look at everything. So the lower the RPMs, the less wear on the engine, to, to a point, right? And personally, I think that 1400 RPM is right at the, the bottom of the limit. And I'll, I'll explain that a little more in a, in a bit. Uh, they calculate something called friction torque, which you can see I put the definition up there. I call it engine wear. It's not necessarily engine wear, but it's friction. And I guess over the long haul, you could equate that to wear. And that's primarily the difference between the 1800 plus RPMs and the 1400 RPMs that we're turning. But you can see it's very negligible in my opinion. This next chart we've got coolant temperature, exhaust gas temperature, and our transmission temperature. You can see that there's very little difference in the coolant temperature. We are running about 430 more RPMs in fifth gear. And anytime you turn in more RPMs, you're increasing the friction as we saw and you're increasing heat. However, the engine is loaded more in sixth. But I believe what we're probably seeing is just a difference in ambient temperatures. But I'm not really sure if anyone would like for me to do a 45 minute video on coolant versus RPMs, I'd be glad to do it. This truck has the 68 RFE transmission on it. You can see that it's very well cooled. It doesn't really care what the load or RPMs or anything is. It's running just fine at 170 some odd degrees. And that's about the same thing I see when I'm empty running on the highway. So not much difference there. And I mentioned the exhaust gas temperature. You can see this running about what 70 something degrees higher in sixth and in fifth. And this is behind the turbo, by the way. I don't have the manifold tap. It's going to be a little higher at the engine itself, at the manifold itself. And this is at 65 miles an hour. In fact, everything to this point is at 65 miles an hour. And another one of Cummins' rock solid rules above 55 miles an hour, each one mile per hour increase in vehicle speed decreases fuel economy by one-tenth of a mile per gallon. And you can see on these first two bars where we're in fifth gear, at 55 miles an hour we're at 10.3 mile per gallon and at 65 miles an hour we're 9.5 mile per gallon. That's not exactly as per the rock solid rule, but it's close. It's eight tenths of a mile per gallon. And also, this really pertains to Cummins' heavy haulers and, you know, 18 wheelers, but it applies to us too. But the only point of me showing you this is just to kind of illustrate that if you s slow down, you're going to exponentially gain mile per gallon. And the reason is, as Cummins tells us, lower RPMs, better mile per gallon, less wind drag, better mile per gallon. Now these fourth generation trucks, 2013 to 2018, they developed their maximum torque right around 1650, I believe, RPMs. Don't hold me to that, but it's close. 
So in six gear at 1400 RPMs, you're way below your maximum torque. And you're not going to have the what Cummins calls the drivability that you would in fifth. And you can see that that fifth gear is running pretty much in its optimum range, especially there in fifth at 1831 RPMs. You can just about tackle anything with that. Oh, and one last thing before I give you my personal opinion, or as I call it, the Marion Blair rock solid rules. And that is the issue of what are we doing to the transmission in six gear with those low RPMs and high torque. And as you get higher in load, the worse it is on the transmission. That's probably the quickest way you can destroy a transmission. Even with my light load, I'm very careful about towing in six gear. One of the things that I do measure is transmission slip. And you can see I throw it up here, mainly through laziness because I don't think it's worth creating a, another graft. But you can see that transmission slip in fifth and sixth gear is basically zero. In fact, it's minus 0.1, which means that this transmission is in good shape. So I tried to list the most important things that I could think of. And I know this video is about the 2500 Ram and the 6.7 diesel and 342 rear end, but this these recommendations really could apply to any time you're towing anything with any type of vehicle. And I'm sure I probably forgot some, and they're not in any particular kind of order, but I kind of think they're all pretty important. At all cost, we want to avoid clutch slippage because that is really the whole point in all of these recommendations, is avoiding clutch slippage. As I say here, it's the death of any transmission. Our trucks are pretty well protected, but try hard enough and you can tear anything up. I'll try to run through these as fast as I can. I know this video's getting long. But anyway, number one, use six gear with caution. Never below 65 miles an hour, in my opinion. Because at lower RPMs and high gears, you're more likely to have clutch slippage than you would at higher RPMs and low gears. I wish Ram would have gave us a choice of more rear axle ratios, but they didn't. And having said that, fifth gear is a hell of a good tow gear. And the transmissions on these trucks are very well cooled, as you could see from the data I gathered. And excessive heat is what starts the slipping in the first place. Always use the tow mode because it increases your shift points, which helps your startability, as Cummins calls it. And it also increases your line pressure from your pump, which will help prevent slippage. As already mentioned, avoid low RPMs and heavy loads. And as already mentioned, use the shift selector and use a gear that's not going to require a lot of downshifting or any downshifting if possible, regardless of what gear that is. Constant downshifting is probably one of the hardest things you can do to your transmission because it creates heat, it thins the oil out, and it just adds wear to everything. RAM gives us excellent feedback on what's going on, so keep it on that little page that lets you look at your temperatures, your engine, engine oil, coolant, and transmission temperatures. You want to be watching that all the time when you're towing. Those temperatures will tell you if you're pushing too hard for the conditions, so it's important that we watch them. Always try to anticipate a downshift coming. And you can do that by monitoring your boost. And after a while, you get a pretty good feel for when your transmission is going to want to downshift. Back off the throttle and make that shift with this shift selector. And finally, do your preventive maintenance. And these beautiful trucks will last you forever. 
As always, guys, I appreciate you watching my video. And until next time, adios. You have reached your destination on the left.